What did I do with my marker while we're there? They are. Okay, go ahead. All right. So no questions on this. And if if you had accounts receivable, it would be an asset, and it would end up in your list of assets here. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Is there a standard order in which accounts are listed on the Yes. Um, the accounts are listed on a balance sheet, uh, typically in the order in which cash is treated as the gold standard. Remember the statement, cash is king? So cash is very important. So I list cash first, and then I list my assets in the order that they can be turned into cash. So if I have um, accounts receivable, I'm going to collect that in 30 days. That's pretty close to cash. But my equipment, I would have to go out and sell that. You know, that may take me four, five, six, eight months. So that gets listed further down. Um, if I have a note receivable from someone that they're going to pay me 10 years from now, that's going to get listed way down. Um, and the same thing with the liabilities. How soon do I need to pay them? So accounts payable is first, because I typically have about 30 days. Um, a note payable that's longer would go further down, and so on. OK? <coughs> Okay. Other questions? All right. I'm going to erase our income statement. I'm going to leave our company up here. I'm going to leave all this fine work that we've done. And we have the absolute worst erasers. Okay. So. <clears throat> Contemplate for a second. If we had a company that, even a decent sized company, where we started listing out on a sheet of paper all of these different categories, these accounts that we were putting uh, you know, expenses and assets and liabilities in, this board would not be big enough in a fairly quick period of time, right? So if we had a company, oh, you know, something small like IBM. How big of a board do you need? I mean, how, how big is this room got to be where you can go all the way around? And then they've got a whole ton of transactions that's going to run you know, way down. The walls would have to be very, very tall. Okay? There's got to be a better way to do this. This is great to show you the concept, and I think you guys have it at this point. But accountants use what's called a T account. And it is highly technical, it looks like that. <laughs> That's why it's called a T account. Okay? And we record things on both sides of the T. Negative numbers at this point go away. You know how I showed negative numbers as cash decreased? Okay, if you're dealing with an asset like cash, Hang on, I'm going to write it down differently. If you're dealing with an asset like cash, asset accounts increase on the left side. Okay, liability accounts increase on the right side. Okay, we're following the basic accounting equation here again. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity plus revenue minus expenses. Okay? Assets increase on this side. So if I buy an asset and promise to pay for it later, I have something on both sides of this T account. Do the two sides equal? Yes. Okay? So if, if we're starting a new company and I put money in, I get cash, and I want to be in balance, so the other side, the owner's equity, must be on the right side. Good? Okay. Revenue. If I, if I make a sale and they pay me in cash, cash goes up, revenue goes up, that must also increase on the left side. Remember the very fine and friendly minus sign in front of the expenses? Where do you think those go? Expenses go over here with the assets. Okay? <clears throat> this is how we use a T account. Hold it one second. And the expenses, they, they don't get a minus sign over 
Not once I put them over here. Right? I flip them to the other side of the equal sign, it flips the sign. Yeah. Okay? It's algebra. I wish I had another color. I, I do have another color. Always come prepared. Okay. Now, we just referred to these as the left side and the right side. Some accounting classes I've seen will go on for weeks and let you call these left and right. Since I've just introduced it, I don't want you to get used to left and right. We're going to skip right into the real world. Accountants refer to everything on the left side as a debit. And everything on the right side as a credit. Okay? So this is one of those things that you're going to have to memorize. The rest of this you can kind of figure out, right? Based on the formula and dropping things in here. But debit and credit, you got to memorize. Just, that's the way it is. Write it on a piece of paper, stick it under your pillow, you know, fold it up, put it in your sandwich, eat the sandwich, whatever you got to do. Okay? So, everybody good with the concept? Okay, let's play a little bit. And let's take all the same transactions that we did earlier with our company and let's enter them as T accounts. Sound good? Okay. And I am going to need all of this space. And we can get set up ahead of time here, too. We know what all of our accounts are, don't we? Okay. So I'm going to make an account for cash. And I'm going to make one for prepaid rent. And I can make one for equipment. And I can make one for prepaid advertising. And the beauty of it is I can come down below here. Now I can use more space on the board. Uh, supplies was the other one. Good so far? Okay. Now we have our liabilities. Accounts payable. Owner's equity. Revenue. And I'm going to even be more, since I have more room to work with on the board now, I'm even going to list out an account for each of our expenses so they each have their own. So what was our first expense? Uh, wages, right? Everybody remember back that far? About a half hour ago? We had wages, we had utilities. I E S. Okay, I can spell. And the last one was supplies, correct? Good? Okay. What was our very first transaction? We put fifty thousand in to start the company. Cash went which way? Up. Uh, I'm going to take a minute and write some things on here. Um, debit is always on which side? Left. Left. Credit is on which side? Right. right. The abbreviation for debit is DR. The abbreviation for credit is? CR. CR. You guys know all this already. This bodes well for me being able to uh, let you guys teach class. It's just a term. Banks do it backwards. <laughs> Banks do it backwards. Do I have to give this lecture now? Okay. 
Typically, someone asks. They go, hey, hang on a second. That doesn't make sense. Right? Cash increases on the debit side. When you go to your bank and you deposit your paycheck, what does the bank do to your account? They credit it. But I'm telling you that cash increases, cash increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. Right? Okay. When it's your account, it increases on the debit side. To the bank, what's, what's the cash account? It's your money. It's a liability to the bank. Liabilities increase on the credit side and they decrease on the debit side. The bank is recording it as a liability to them. So they credit your account. Hence the fact that it's dead backwards. <laughs> okay? But they're crediting your account. Somebody always asks. Okay? So an asset account, <clears throat> excuse me, an asset account cash increases on the debit side. Who said that? Who said left? We so oh, but you know. <laughs> we don't use left and right anymore. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'll let it slide. Ca asset accounts increase on the debit side, also the left side. They decrease on the right side, the credit side. Prepaid rent is what? An asset? Yes. It increases on which side? Yes. Decreases on? Credit. credit. Prepaid advertising is? Asset. asset. Increases on the? Yes. Decreases on the credit side. Equipment? Yes. Asset. asset. Increases debit, decreases credit. Supplies? Yes. Asset. Increased debit, decreased credit. Accounts payable? Liability decreases debit, increases credit. Owner's equity is owner's equity. It increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side, just like your, ask, your liabilities. Revenue increase on the credit side. Increase on the credit side, decrease on the debit side. All of your expenses. Increase, on the debit. increase as a debit, decrease credit. Okay? Now, when I go through the, the PowerPoint slides for Chapter 3, I have one slide where all of this is on one page. It's a great study aid. And you guys all have access to the slides through Blackboard, so I suggest you go print it out and use it as a study tool, okay? All right, so let's do our transactions. Transaction one, we put in $50,000 in exchange uh, to start the company. So owner's equity goes which way? Uh, credit. Up. It's a credit, right? It increases on the credit side. And cash goes which way? Uh, up. Which is a? Debit. debit. Do my debits equal my credits? Yes. I'm in balance. Good. Okay. Transaction two. We prepaid some rent, so our asset prepaid rent goes up or down? Uh, up. Debit or credit? Debit. It's a debit. Cash, we had to give up cash to get it. Cash goes which way? Credit. Down. down, credit. Notice I did not list it as a negative. It's simply a credit. Okay. To find out the balance in this account, you add up all your debits and you subtract all your credits and you get your ending balance. Okay? That's how it works. Third transaction. We bought some equipment. Equipment's an asset. It increases on which side? Debit. And we had to do what? We, how did we pay for it? We gave them $5,000 in cash, which means cash goes down. And we incurred a liability, accounts payable, of 10000 Accounts payable goes up as a credit. OK? Um, then we bought some prepaid advertising. Advertising is an asset. It goes up on which side? Debit, Debit side. 
and we paid for it with? Cash. So we credit cash. Okay? Uh, supplies, we bought some supplies. Supplies are an asset. They go up on which side? $3,000 debit. Paid for it in what fashion? No. Accounts payable. Accounts payable. Accounts payable increases on the credit side. So my debit equals my credit. Okay? Uh, for every debit there is a credit. For every credit there is a debit. And remember, we did, oh, I'm skipping a step. I'm making this easy. When you do this in real life, you mark your transactions together. Remember our original 50,000 investment here? There's an A transaction, and the A comes down here, so I can tie the two together. This is creating an audit trail. I got lazy and skipped that late on a Monday night, didn't I? Okay, so B, B, our equipment transaction. C, we gave up cash, and we gave up accounts payable. Okay, then we bought advertising, D, D, cash went down, supplies, E, ties to E here, accounts payable. I'm caught up, good. Too fast or are we good? Good, 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 yes, no. Yes and no. Okay. I'm down to, we opened our doors and we made our first sale. Revenue increases on which side? Credit side. We had $5,000 in sales and they paid us how? The best way possible, we got cash. Which transaction is this? Is this F? Okay. I gotta get an F here and an F over here. Okay, then what did we do? We paid some bills. We paid our employees. How did we pay them? In cash. Expenses go up on which side? And we paid them $3,000. G. Cash goes down. G. Then we paid our utility bill. Cash goes down again. And that gets recorded under utilities as an expense. It's a debit. Notice for every debit I'm posting a credit and for every credit I'm posting a debit. Notice I just did the credit first instead of the debit first. It works. Typically you do the debit first, but no guts, no glory. Okay, we paid for some supplies, or we used them up. Supplies increase on the debit side. Supplies expense, that is. I, so we have a debit there, and we had to reduce the balance in our supplies, the asset account, so that would be a credit. I, good? Everybody follow through that. This is a big step, so take a moment, ask questions. Okay, we had supplies in the, in the closet already that we bought earlier. Okay, and we used some of them up. So we, we took the asset and we took out what we had used up and we recorded that as, a, as an expense because we've used them. Okay, and we have less left in the supply closet. Next question. None? Really? Can I see the board? <laughs> That's a good question. Take a moment. I'm going to get something to drink. <laughs> All right. Other questions? Yes. You can go A, 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 B, A, C, like an Excel spreadsheet, okay? Um, when we get to chapter four, I'll teach you something else. 
But for now, this is, this is good enough. So this replaces all of this. And if you notice, I could have kept going and entered a lot more transactions over there that would not fit over here. I could have run out of room over here long before I run out of room over there. Typically in the business world, in, in accounting, each of these is called an account. We categorize and we put things in an account. Non-accountants will sometimes refer to them as buckets, which makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. But we get used to it. <laughs> I'm hoping to eventually. Um, so we categorize everything. We put it in an account. For every company, they have all of these accounts that they use. And each company will be a little different from every other. So if you took an, pick a company, IBM, HP, you know, uh, Dole, whoever you want to pick, they would have a unique list of accounts. And that list is called the chart of accounts. The chart of accounts is always listed in the assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, expenses order. It's just down a sheet of paper. Okay? And in a computerized world, typically they're given numbers. So say cash will be 100, accounts receivable will be 110, Prepaid advertising will be 120. Sales will be, say, 500. And you know they'll assign a number to it. So when they're entering things in the computer, they don't have to type out supplies expense. They put in account 615. And they, then they enter the amount. And it does it for them. OK? Everybody good with that? OK. I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to tackle one more thing. And then we'll move on. I don't need to come all the way over there. I try not to erase things too fast. If I ever do, somebody just stop me, OK? All right, so we've entered all of our transactions. I want to now end the month, and we're going to do the same thing that we did over here, is we had to total each of our accounts. And then I'm going to prove that I'm in balance before I create my, my financial statements, right? The income statement, the statement of owner's equity, and the balance sheet. So we're going to do something called the trial balance. Um, you guys, I shouldn't have erased the numbers on the board first. But we can do the math again, right? So when you get to the end of, the, uh, end of an accounting period and you total up your account, you add up all your debits, you subtract all your credits, and what you do is you put a line on the side where the balance remains, right? Over here I think we have $38,900. So we have a positive cash balance of $38,900. If you took $55,000 and subtracted all of these, you'd have $38,900. This is called footing the account, totaling it up. And the balance goes on the side that the balance exists. If we had a negative balance, right, if we had written more checks than we had cash, your balance would be over here on the credit side. Is cash supposed to have a, a positive balance or a negative balance? Positive. positive. So the balance being a debit is what we refer to as a normal balance because it's on the debit side. Okay? If I total up a liability, accounts payable, I know that one's 13,000. I have a 13,000 credit balance. Because it's a liability, this is also a normal balance for a liability account, having a credit balance. Everybody see how that works? Okay. Now, because we're accountants and we do lots of work and we work very hard, we try and you know, make it as easy as we can. If you have an account that just has one number in it, you can double underline it and you're done. Okay? I don't have to go through any extra effort of underlining, bringing down a balance and writing it down. Double underline it. Move on. Save yourself some time. But by double underlining, you show people that you've looked at it, calculated the balance, and reflected it correctly. 
Everybody good with this? Yes. Okay. So I saved a lot of time. I didn't have to do the math over here because there's just one entry. Questions on that? That's footing or totaling your accounts. Good? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Total your your debits, subtract your credits. I got two thousand oh, debit balance. Okay. Good? Okay. So the next thing I want to show you is called a trial balance. And this is a tool that, that you use to, at this point, prove you're in balance. So if you've made a mistake, you can stop here and figure it out before you start creating your financial statements. Um, and it's also a great tool to create your financial statements from. It is not a formal financial statement. It is merely a tool. But it does get a header just like a financial statement. It's get, it gets the who, what, and when. And the when happens to also be a snapshot or a single point in time. Okay? A trial balance is very straightforward. It's a list of all of your accounts in assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity plus revenue minus expenses order. So I'm going to list all my asset, assets, but I'm not going to show it. I'm not going to say assets and then start. I'm just going to list them. Cash, prepaid rent, prepaid advertising, uh, equipment, Supplies, uh, accounts payable, owner's equity, revenue, wages, utilities, and supplies. Good? Complete list. Everybody with me? We have assets, liability, owner's equity, revenue, expenses, in order. And you can group them nice and neat. Okay. Now we come over and we have two columns and we have a debit and a credit column. I don't even have to do a lot of uh, thinking here. I just pull the ending balances and I put them in the right column. So how much cash do I have? 38,900. Now, as we learn more about this and you want to, you want to be very precise. What, how much cash do we have? 38,900 debit. Okay, you tell someone a whole lot. If, I, if you go, how much cash do you have? Well, I got 40,000 credit. <laughs> credit, you know, right? It makes a big difference. Prepaid rent, 6,000 debit. Uh, prepaid advertising, 2,000 debit. Uh, equipment, 15,000. Debit, supplies, 2,000 debit, accounts payable. I have a $13,000 credit, and I'm going to come over and put that in the credit column. Notice how I've got a second column going on now. Okay? Owner's equity, $50,000 credit. Revenue, $5,000 credit. Expenses, wages, remember to jump back. It's a debit balance. How much is it? 3000 3, Utilities was 100 Supplies was 8000 So list all your debits. List all your credits. Everybody with me? Good? Okay. 
to be a formal trial balance, we've got to have total totals, because we're going to total both our debits and our credits column. Double underline it to show that we're in balance. I totaled the credits. I didn't total the debits. I made an assumption. Anybody like to double check it for me? Notice it proves that we are in balance. $68,000 in debits, $68,000 in credits. Good? Okay, everybody's with me. So from this, look at the tool you've got here to create your balance sheet from. Here's all your assets. Here's all your liabilities and owner's equity. Income statement. Here's your revenue and expenses, and I list them all out. Bang, you can pull these off really quick. Power through your income statement. Statement of owner's equity, take your income statement, beginning owner's equity, do the statement. So you've got a great tool here. It proves that you're in balance and that you're good to move forward, but you can also use it to create your financial statements from. Good? Questions? Yes? Is that 68,000 supposed to match what they balanced out earlier on? Theoretically, yeah. <laughs> okay. If we were using the same numbers, which it looks like we were, but something got missed well, somewhere. Well, yeah. Hang on a second. Your your revenue is still a credit, like we were treating it over there, but your expenses are now in the debit column, and that changes what the total was. It's no longer the sixty three nine. Okay, it increases by what your expenses were. So yes, they are going to be different than treating it the other way. And this is how accountants do it. And this, you could do it this way. It's going to take you longer. Um, you got the concept from this. Now I'm showing you how we, we do it and record it. Because what we're doing as accountants is creating the formal books and records of a company. And um, we need them to look, you know, official and efficient and accurate and easy to read and follow. So we do this. OK? Good question, though. Had me for just a second. <laughs> Other questions? OK, so here's what I'd like to do. It's uh, almost 10 after 7. We're going to take break in a second. We'll take it a little early. So I can erase all the stuff on the board, because it'll take me that long. <clears throat> and then I want to go through uh, the material out of the book. Basically the same concepts, but I just want to reinforce it. Okay. Then we will spend time answering homework questions from chapters 1 and 2, chapter 2, and any other questions you may have. Sound fair? Okay. So let's take a break until quarter after 7.